Amen. 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 Amen.
He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we just thank you. Thank you. To you be all the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let me live my life. Yeah. And let it be pleasing unto you. Yes. If I should gain any praise, give it to Calvary. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the angels being here in the sanctuary. Yes. We thank you that if any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God, the very Amen. saints of God, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Yes. This is a message that I had ministered once before, but I just believe that uh, the saints need to hear this instructional message. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. That you may be encouraged today. And the title of this message, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. The title of this message is, Can You Work With It? Amen. Can you work with it? I'm coming out of the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35 through 38. Amen. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You know, we live in a day and age where there's so much going on in the world. And I can remember before COVID-19, churches used to be more filled. And I understand the age that we're living in. We're living in an age of technology. But even though we're living in the age of technology, if you're not in the physical house, you need to be on somebody's live so you can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Yeah. Now, we have experienced some hard times in the last couple of years. But those hard times are not over. Amen. Right. Now I could get up here and preach to you about your new car. Come on here. Well, some of you all got new cars last yeah. year. Yeah. So you, you don't want to say amen to the new yeah. car that you got. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And God wants to bless some of you all with new homes. And some of you all settled on properties last year. Amen. Yeah. But more so than the homes. Amen. And the cars. Because those things are nice. Amen. Yeah. Some of you, God has fulfilled on um, Filled your bank up perpetually. Amen. Amen. You got a job, so that means every two weeks you get a check. Amen. 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 So if you're getting a check every two weeks, Lord, thank God. You got something coming in. Amen. I don't know about you all, but my wife's pretty happy when I get paid. Because I'm happy, she's happy. You ain't here. Amen. Amen. But anyway, God has done that for me as a man because I asked God for that. Amen. But more so than about me, more so about my wife, more so about the car I drive, the house I live in, because I'm living good these days. Why? Because I serve God. And I've been serving God for a long time. So guess what? I deserve to be living good. Why? Because my father promised it to me. Amen? He said, Do, if you serve him, Lord have mercy, somebody need to finish that for me. And obey him, you will spend your days in prosperity. And the years of pleasure. What are you saying, Chief Apostle? You will get to live out your days and enjoy your grandchildren and your grandchildren's children. Oh, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. You'll have money in the bank, and if you remember the Lord, guess what? You'll be able to spend it. <laughs> and you'll be able to live in a nice house. But it ain't all about the nice house. He promised you prosperity, He promised you the pleasure. But Jesus was talking about the harvest. Jesus was talking about souls. Yes. He said the harvest is plentiful, but there are few labors. Come on. So the title of my message is, you got to work with it. You got to work with what? You got to work with the talents. You got to work with the abilities that God has blessed you with. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
Why do I stay up sometimes at 3 in the morning playing my keyboard? Because that's a talent and a gift that God has given me, and I'm using it for the kingdom. Right. That somebody may hear the musicians playing. Somebody may be encouraged by a song that a pastor was singing that we may be able to go a little bit further in Christ. Amen. 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 I'm not talking about the BET Awards. I know they had hip hop going on. Amen. Y'all remember the hip hop awards? Huh? Y'all remember that? Yes. A lot of flesh on display, wasn't it? Yes. Did it bring glory to God? No. no. I know somebody gonna get upset because they like hip hop. There's nothing wrong with a little hip hop, but guess what? I know the father of all fathers. I know the father. Of, of everything, and guess what? I'd rather stand before God in the last day and say, you took your gift, yeah. you took your voice, yeah. you took your hands, come on, you took your body, yeah. and you used it to my glory. Yeah. So, therefore, <laughs> enter into the rest of the Lord, Lord have mercy, and hear these words, well done, yeah. My good and faithful servant. Yeah, yeah. Remember what I told you I wanted you to do last week for me. Yes, yes. Remember that apostle, what I told Jesus, you I wanted Jesus, you to do. Jesus. Okay, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Huh? Hallelujah. Enter yes. into the rest of the Lord. Yes. Because there's going to come a time, Lord have mercy, where I can just look out in the congregation. We got some young people upstairs, but a lot of y'all in y'all 60s, you ain't hearing what I'm amen. saying. Amen. 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 God only promised us 70 years. You better work while it's dead. Yes. Right. Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, yes. but there are few labors. The one that used to sing a song, they said, if I labor, God is going to give me a crown. We're talking about not going to your job, although going to your job is important, but you've got a work to do that God has called you to do. He's called you to work in the vineyard. He's called you to be faithful over few things. He wants to make you ruler over many, but they are souls that are laying in the valley. There's somebody that was out there like you were years ago. There's somebody that don't know God. God wants you to stop by some of your relatives' house that you know are not serving God and tell them about the goodness of God. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Huh? They may not want to hear what you've got to say. But guess what? If the Holy Spirit sends you by their way, go there anyway. Huh? A couple of my relatives years ago, I went over their house. I ain't going to tell you their names because some of you all know them. And I was talking to them about God. And I was over their house for three whole hours trying to convince them to come to church and trying to convince them to serve God. Listen, Jesus said if you go to them, and they don't receive you. Jesus says, shake the dust off your feet and keep moving because there's somebody that wants to hear what you have to say. Amen. Come on here. Amen. Amen. And so we go back. Verse 35. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were they were harassed and helpless. They were sheep without a shepherd. Can you imagine being in the situation that some of these people are in? They don't have a shepherd. They are out and not under the covering of a man of God or a woman of God, it is a dangerous position to be in without being connected to a covenant. Amen. Or being connected to a local church. Amen. But this day and age we're living in, I'm going to tell y'all what people want. They want situational pastors. Somebody say, Chief Apostle, where'd you get that from? Situational pastor? Yeah. As long as I'm saying what you want me to say, and I'm doing what you want me to do. I'm your pastor. But the minute I bring correction on you and tell you this is not what you're supposed to be doing, he ain't my pastor no more. Listen, people want situational pastors. You can be my pastor as long as you marry me. You're my pastor as long as I have a relative and they die and you 
you do the burial service, but the moment you say, ah, 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 you are not walking the right way, you got to go in another way, then what happens? What happens? I don't want to hear what you got to say. People want situational passing. But God is calling us in a day that we need to be under a covering, amen. We need to be under the anointing, and we need to be in Bible study. Y'all not hearing me today. Y'all not hearing me today. Hallelujah. We got to be in Bible study. You got to be accountable. Folks don't want to be accountable, right? Amen. You're accountable when you punch that clock. Why are you accountable when you punch that clock? Because if you don't punch the clock and you don't come to work and you're not on time, what happens? Huh? What's that slip? What color is that slip? Get a pink slip. They bring you in the office. None of y'all never been fired. Huh? Look at that. I don't really want to cheat. I don't know I've been fired before. Okay, I've been fired before. Listen, that's why God uses me. You know why God used me? Because I'm transparent, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of God, and I'm not ashamed of what God done in my life. Amen. And you know why God going to keep blessing me? Because I know how to run my mouth for God. Amen. And I'm not, listen, I ain't cute. I ain't cute. <laughs> I ain't trying to be something I'm not. Amen. I'm giving glory to God. Amen. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Amen. You know why a lot of people don't go far? Because they always trying to judge the book by the cover. Lord have mercy. But you know what God, God, God judges you by? God judges you by your heart. So guess what? I've been fired a couple of times, maybe more than once. But guess what I did? I learned. I learned. Oh, somebody in here what I'm saying. I learned how not to get fired. I learned how to be show up to work on time. I learned how to do my job efficiently and effectively. And what did that do? As I learned that, guess what also I did? I learned how to study the word. I learned how to be in Bible study. I learned how to be in prayer. Because certain blessings come on your life from doing that. I learned what is God's will for my life. What is God's will for your life? Well, God called me to be a pastor. Oh, really? Okay. No, God called me to be an elder. Well, God called me to be a deacon. That's all fine. It's not about your title. It's about what have you done for God lately. Amen. When's the last time you went out and witnessed to somebody in your family? When's the last time you went on your job and you told them about Jesus? That's what God is after. God is after the heart. And you know what God says? If I can get a hold of you and I can send you to your family and I can send you to those on your job and you can open up your mouth and give me glory, guess what? I have no problem with blessing you. Why? Because I know that you're going to give me glory. Some people in church, they so fake. But Chief Apostle, I want to hear about the car. I want to hear about the house. God don't have a problem with the car. He don't have a problem with the house. God wants you to give your testimony. He wants you to tell somebody you were struck out. He wants you to tell somebody that's promiscuous that you used to be a whoremonger. Nobody want to talk about truth in the church. All they want to do is have a good, feel-good message and jump and shout and walk away and not be changed. But God wants somebody to be changed from your testimony. If God brought him out, then God can bring me out. But how will they know? Somebody say, how will they know? They're going to know by you opening up your mouth and testifying and telling them how good God is. Amen. And go back in your mind and stop being prideful and remember what God brought you out of. Amen. If God brought you out of marijuana, say I used to smoke marijuana every day. I used to take crack cocaine. Good God Almighty. I used to drink. Hey. I 
was promiscuous. I had a lying tongue. I cursed all the time. But guess what? God began to cleanse me up. God began to clean me. You can't clean up yourself. These people think they can clean up themselves. What did Jesus say? Jesus said the harvest is plentiful, but there are few laborers. What also did Jesus say? Jesus said that they had an issue. They were sheep without a shepherd. Lord, have mercy. How are they going to get healed unless they come to church? Tell me how. How are they going to get healed? Unless they come to church. How are they going to get delivered unless you tell them? You think God just wanted to deliver me and not you? Huh? God wants to deliver you. But if you masking, y'all know what masking is? Masking is this. I know you say me, but I really, 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 really don't want to tell nobody. Some been divorced. But you think because you've been divorced that God can't still use you. Why? Because people think you're going to hell because you've been divorced. God don't like divorce, but you're not going to hell because you got one. You go to hell because you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what takes you to hell. Come on, man. You preach it. I'm preaching truth. Yes, you are. Huh? Drinking won't get you in hell. What it gets you in hell if you keep denying Jesus Christ. That's it. You take a drink, but guess what? I know somebody who can take the taste of alcohol out of your mouth. Yes. He has the power to deliver you. Yes. Well, you know, I, 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 I've been to AAA and I mean, I don't have a problem with AAA, but a lot of people don't have to go to AAA. They go to G-O-D. They go to G-O-D. And they don't have no uh, positive affirmations. You know what their positive uh, affirmation is when they follow G-O-D? It's one word. It's called trust. Huh. You got it on your dollar. In God we trust. So why don't you trust God? And take it to the Lord in prayer. That's what they need to do. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Say, I know if it had not, oh, if it had not, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? Thinking deep in sin, somebody came by my way. Somebody invited me to a church. Somebody told me about the goodness of God. I went into the church. I heard the word of God. I heard the music. I heard the singer. And I said, you know what? It's time for me to change my life. It's time for me to turn my life around. So we got to work. We got to work while it's day. And we got to consider others before we consider ourselves. Yeah. 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 Yes. We got to, I'm going to say that again. We got to consider others before we consider ourselves. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. But listen, when you're only thinking about yourself, you're only thinking about what you want. That's why when you can't get your way, Lord, after you get upset. Mm. But when you're thinking about others, listen, you tell them, it ain't about me. God is about what you want. How many times do you think me and me and my wife quit ministry? Huh? How many times do you think we quit? In 19, 18, 19 years. We got up many days and said, man, I'm done with this. Come on. I don't even feel like going down to that place. I know you think we holy. Woo! I know you got your impression about who you think's anointed and who ain't anointed. Listen. When you, even when you're anointed and you go through church, do you think when we lost our son, we felt like coming to church after we lost our son? And some folk didn't even come over to our house. We've been over everybody's house. Oh, I'm preaching up in 
here. Huh? We gave you cards. We encouraged you. We told you. We loved you. And you couldn't even park in front of my house. Oh, chief of possible. You tight. You tight, chief of possible. Listen, you will never have to wonder or guess where I'm coming from. I'm here to serve God. And I'm here to walk as God tells me to walk. You got a situation in your family. Your pastor is supposed to be there. Amen? Amen. Huh? Amen. We there when you don't even know we there. We praying for you when you don't even know we praying for you. Amen. So why did Jesus say the harvest is plentiful? Because people don't want to come to church. Don't even get what I got to say this morning. I'm, I'm good. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. They don't mind coming, but the heart is not there. Mm. Huh? If your heart isn't in it, y'all remember that song? Why can't you tell me so? Man is looking at the outside. It don't matter how good you look. It don't matter how eloquent you speak. It doesn't even matter how many Bible studies you attend. Man is looking at the outside, but God wants to know, where is your heart? I'm calling you to the lost. I need you to go out to the highways and the byways because Jesus said in Matthew 35, there's plenty of people need to be saved. Right? There's plenty of people need to be saved. But guess what? I'm looking for somebody that's going to run their mouth. Huh? For God. Let's get back to those blessings. Let's get back to them blessings. You know why I keep getting blessed? I'm not making this message about me, but I'm just going to tell you why. Because I brag on God. Amen. <laughs> I brag on God. And you know what I do? Every time God allows me to get on the mic, I talk about the goodness of God. I talk about how God has blessed me. Come on here. Some people think they did it in their own strength. You did it in your own strength. You got a job. And all you talk about is retirement. Huh? Huh? Can't wait till I retire. Because when I retire, I'm going to travel. Hallelujah. What is that? Okay. <laughs> Somebody's trying to tell us something. I hear the bells. <laughs> Heaven is co on what I'm saying. If I can't get an amen from you, I get an amen from this phone. Lord have mercy. God got a way like none of us are speaking to you. God wants you not so much to be focused on retiring because can I tell you a secret? Oh, Chief Apostle, you're tight, but it's right. You will never retire in God. Right. You will work for the Lord until you die. So stop talking about your retirement because God might let you retire from the job, but God not letting you retire from him. The moment you retire from him, guess what? You are out of here. Now think about this. I'm going to give you something to think about. You know some people that died that's around your age and that's younger. Huh? Why did they die? Well, it was just God's will that they died. Ask me why you're still here. Huh? Oh, quiet today. Thank you, Michelle. Got work to do. If you are willing to put in the work, then God don't have no problem with blessing you. He's looking for laborers. In the vineyard, he's looking for people that's willing to put in the work. What does pulling in the work require? 
when we got a food program down here, that's evangelistic. Did y'all know that was evangelistic? Yeah. God wants you to unload some trucks. Every God wants you to unload some trucks. Yeah. He wants you to get some food out. Yes. But while you're giving them food out, he wants you to smile at somebody. He wants you to tell them about the goodness of God. He wants you to pray with somebody. He wants you to help somebody. Why? Because God has helped you. When God blessed you, he don't want you to keep it to yourself. Nah, I'm just not going to let them know I got a new car. They just going to see. I'm just not going to tell them I got a new home. They just going to see. You ain't bringing God no glory because you don't want to tell nobody. Because if you don't want to tell nobody, guess what? You're doing that in your own strength. But when you can glorify God and say, my credit was jacked. <laughs> There's no way in the world I should be in this house. There's no way in the world I should be driving this car because I filed bankruptcy years ago. But the same God that brought me out of bankruptcy is the same God that allowed me to drive what I want to drive and live where I want to live. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. You've been locked up. Don't want to tell nobody you went to jail. Huh? But somebody who's getting ready to go to jail need to hear your testimony. That if you go to jail, God can bring you out. Oh, you don't want to tell nobody you still got a drinking problem. But guess what? If you keep coming to the house of God, it's tight, but it's right. You stay in the word of God, God can change you. But I got a contingency here. Somebody say there's a contingency. Huh? What's the contingency? If God brings you out and he delivers you, you have a responsibility and an accountability to go tell others what God did for you. Not to think you did it for yourself. Well, I've been coming to the church and I'm not doing that anymore. But you ain't told nobody. Go get you some wine notes. <laughs> now you say you serve God. Go back to the wine notes. You should stand on the corner doo wopping with and drinking and bring them into the church. Hallelujah. Feel you got the new car. Yes. Huh? Fill your car up and bring them to the church. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Because yes. just like God delivered you, he wants to deliver them. This message isn't popular, ah. but I promise you in heaven, I got all aims. Why? Because I'm not talking about what God going to do for you. <laughs> I'm talking about what are you going to do for God? What have you done for God lately? Somebody say you got to work. 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 Corinthians 15 and 58. Somebody read that for me. Why do we get the hard words? Because I'm the chief. I get the hard words. Because I'm called to set order in God's house. Oh, you're here. Yeah. I know what God told me. He said, Kevin, you will oversee and you will protect the ministry. So don't come up in the ministry with no foolishness. Somebody, can you read it? Therefore, my brother, be steadfast Unremovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Minister Michelle. You. What is my type? Can you work with it? Can you work with it? God is looking for somebody to work. She just read. She just read. What did she read? Huh? She said, 
Be steadfast. What else did she say? Be unmovable. Huh? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? Your labor is not in vain in God. I promise you, your labor is not in vain in God. I promise you, your labor is not in vain. If you're willing to work and labor for God, God will remember you. He remember you when you sick. He remember you when you broke. He remember when you in trouble. Why would he remember you? Because you are useful to God. And why do you think I asked you earlier, some folk check out of here early, is because they don't want to work. Hey. They want. They want from God. But are you willing to do what God is requiring you to do? What is the required thing? Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful. Let me break it down. There are plenty of people that are out here in this world that we're living in, killing one another, robbing one another, stealing from one another, lying on one another, cheating on one another. Come on here. Children being disrespectful, disrespectful to parents. There's so much turmoil going on in the world. God don't want you to focus on them. He wants you to focus on him. Why are you here on planet Earth? You are here to do the work. You are here to go out and labor. And I promise you, your labor is not in vain. So why should God keep you around? Say, why is God keeping me around? God is keeping you around because he wants you to finish your course. Amen? Let me really close this. 35, I got to read it again. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were, harass uh, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Lord have mercy. Verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. So what do we got to do in order for us to have more labors? Huh? <laughs> huh? Open your mouth. I'm going to give you something that's right in the word. It's right here. It's right in your face. It says, therefore, verse 38. It says, pray earnestly. Amen? Because if you're going out and you ain't praying, you're not going to have no effectiveness. That's good, good. You can do it in your own strength. I'm, I'm minister so-and-so. I'm apostle so-and-so. You can go out in your own strength. But guess what? If you pray first, I shot to your side Lord, Lead thee to some soul. Come on now. Lead thee to some folk that are ready to receive you. Yeah. You might not know who they are. Yeah. But verse 38 says, therefore, pray earnestly. What do you do when you pray earnestly? Huh? Do you pray like this? Is that fervent? That ain't fervent. Fervent is shiny a soto ya sata. He never had time with authority. Fervently believe in God that when I pray, you hear my prayer. I'm praying fervently, I'm praying earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The harvest yeah. is plentiful. Yeah. But the 
laborers of few. Why you think it's only a few in here? Huh? Because everybody don't want to work. They want to receive. But you know what giving is? Oh God, this is the Holy Ghost. Giving is giving of your talents. Giving is giving of your time. And giving is giving in working for the Lord. You may say, well, one brother told us, he said, I can't come down there and work in the food. See, y'all don't know what me and Apostle will be hearing. <laughs> we hear all kinds of stuff. I can't work in the food unless they pay me. But was coming to the church. Oh, y'all want me to tell the truth. Y'all want me to stop here? Because I can stop. I know y'all want to hear what I got to say. Coming to the church every Sunday getting bags of food. Am I lying? Well, I'm preaching the truth. No, I got to preach the truth. Every Sunday, walking out with a bag. But told a brother in the church that if they want me to work in the food, they don't have to pay me. Listen, God knows the hearts. Listen, how many years I've been on that keyboard playing? I don't get paid to play because my labor is unto the Lord. Now, I'm not saying people who play don't deserve to get paid, but God blesses me in other ways. Say, God bless him in other ways. God bless him in other ways, yeah. And I don't have a problem with the other way God blessed me in, but God knows my heart. Some musicians won't even play unless you give them a dollar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. And they're wondering why they can't get anywhere. Wow. Huh? Wondering why you're still in the same situation you was in 10 years ago. Because you're playing for money, you're not playing for God. Come on here. Serving is worthy of his hire, but you got to have the right heart when it comes to God. You got to have the right heart when it comes to your leaders. You got to have the right heart when it comes to serving others. You got to go out of your way to do what God has called you to do. Don't say, well, I ain't going out there with them. <laughs> That's them, but that ain't me. But when you stand before an almighty God on that last day, when the secrets of all hearts will be revealed, when you're thinking you was working for God, but you was working for yourself. When you're thinking you was serving God, but you only wanted to serve God so you can get, somebody can call you Uma Uma. But guess what? If you really love God, whether you got a title or you don't have a title, you're going to do what God has called you to do. You're going to work with a title, yes. you're going to work without a title. That's it. You're going to serve with a title, yes. you're going to serve without a title. You're going to pray without a title, Woo. come on here. Come on. You're going to serve without a title. Yes. Why? Because it's not about the title, it's about your love for God and the things of God. And what you do in secret, what you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Your labor. The pastor might not ever pat you on your back. The pastor might not ever call your name. You don't have to say amen. I say amen myself. But even if the pastor don't call your name, even if you don't get a pat on the back, God sees your labor. Serve God and continue to labor before the Lord. Because not only will he reward you in the afterlife, he rewards you in this life. And finally, there's a word. It's called recompense. It's called recompense.
recompense. You know what recompense means? Oh, I'm teaching y'all something. Hey. I'm teaching you something here. You might not think you can learn something, but I'm teaching you something. I'm, one, I'm the one up here. Lord, have mercy. Fred Price used to always say, I'm here and you're there. I'm teaching you something today. Yeah. Recompense. It means a reward. It don't mean tomorrow. It don't mean in the by and by. It means right here and right now. God wants to bless somebody right here and right now. Why are you so blessed? Say, why are you so blessed? Because I know how to thank God. Listen, I don't thank God up here and not thank God when I'm walking to the Walmart. Huh? When I get a blessing from God, listen, I'm not going to keep it to myself. I'm going to tell God, thank you, God. Because I know if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be where I am. So every time I get a check that I didn't expect, I get a cash share that I didn't expect. Come on here. I get a promotion that I didn't expect. You know what I say? Thank you. And what does God say? He said, Kevin, Kevin, your labor is not in vain. Because when you work, you're not working for yourself. You're working for me. And I'm going to give you a recompense. I know when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. But guess what? I'm going to put something in your pocket right now. <laughs> Why do I want to put it in your pocket? Because every time I bless you, you open up your mouth and you give me glory. Come on here. Huh? Every time I do something good for you, you give me glory. What is giving me glory? God said, I don't mind bringing recompense upon you for the work, but don't work for the recompense. Don't work for the recompense. Work because you love God and you want to do his will. Listen, we're not, we didn't quit our jobs. It's been 19 years. We didn't quit our jobs to say we're going to go into the ministry so you can get, listen, whether you give to us or not, my pocket still get full. Amen. Because he sees my labor. Amen. He sees my wife's labor. Yes. We're laboring for the Lord. Amen. And God is able to give you recompense. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Work yes. while it's dead. I'm closing this. I know I said it a couple of times, but I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Work while it's day. Do you remember when you were younger? You were strong. You could run up and down steps like them grandbabies we got upstairs. Sometimes I send them downstairs when they over to get stuff for Pop Pop. Oh, yeah. They call me a possum Pops. That's, a, that's what Chris started calling me. Too. They, Pastor Shelley said, he's a possum Pops. They call me a possum pops. They go, go downstairs and get this for a possum pops. Because <laughs> a possum pops is at an age right now where if I take too many trips up and down the steps, I got to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a nap. As a matter of fact, I'm taking a couple of naps these days. Huh? But I'm still laboring. Sometimes when we got the food truck down here and we got to work, when I get off of work, I get off early. I go home and I go to bed. Because yeah. I know I got to get back up. And I got to go out. And I got to continue to work. I don't have the strength, the energy that I used to have. But guess what? I'm going to serve God until I check up out of here. Because I don't want to stand before God and God say, you was only concerned about blessing. You wasn't concerned about laboring in the vineyard. And when God blessed you and he fills up your wallet, don't get the stingy spirit. <laughs> oh, the Lord done bless you. You can't even send $50 over to the ministry because you so blessed, but you don't want to give. And you know God been good to you. You know if it had not been for the Lord, who's on your side? Where would you be? Yes. You remember when you 
caught COVID-19. Some people caught COVID-19 and they ain't even here anymore. You still here. You still walking. You still breathing. And you want to tell me you can't serve God when he delivered you. He kept you pretty and full for two and a half years. He kept some of you all with a job. If it had not been for God, who? Tell me where would you be? You may not have what you want right now. I say it again. You may not have what you want right now. But keep serving God. Keep encouraging others. Keep working for the Lord. Listen, we call God El Rohi. I know you, son. You, you own me. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm here, you hear me. with your eyes. I see. We call God El Rohi. Why do we call him El Rohi? He got many names. You know why I like El Rohi? I like El Rohi because no matter what you say, oh God, I feel the Holy Spirit. God see. Yes, 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 yes. It don't matter what people say. But God sees your heart. And God sees what you do. And what you do is secret. God will be more openly. Huh? 19 years. 19 years of serving God. And you don't think that God is going to fill this church? You crazy. Amen. You crazy. Amen. You are liar and the truth ain't in. Nineteen years of faith we serve God. Amen. And you don't think God is going to do what he promised us? Amen. This is just a test. Amen. God is testing our faith to see if it's 25, if it's 30, if it's 40. Oh, anybody can serve God when you got two or three hundred people jumping around. You want to preach before people then. Yeah, let me read the scripture today. But can you still serve God when it's five? Come on, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Can you still get up, put on your clothes, and come to God's house yeah. like it's a thousand people? Yeah. Yeah. Because God is looking at the heart. Yeah. And what God is saying, word and praise, I got a word for you. I'm preparing you. Mm. Oh, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. Yeah. You hear me, Pastor? Yeah. Yeah. I'm preparing you. Yeah. Yeah. For your next level. Yes. But first of all, I gotta see whether or not you trust me. Mm. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Abraham, Abraham, I'm gonna make you father of many nations. Yeah. But I gotta see whether you and Sarah trust me. You're getting up there in age. You 65, you 62, you 64, I'm 61, she's 62, you 64. I got it almost right, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Let it fall where it may. Let it sit. Come on. And God has promised a lot of you some things. Yeah. And you think because you're getting up there now that you're not going to see it. Yeah. I beg to differ. I said I beg to differ. Amen. Right. Hey, oh, it's nice to minister to the children. And you hope that they live to see your age. But you've been serving God for a while now. And guess what? Abraham and Sarah, they laugh at the promise of God. Don't laugh at the promise of God. God told us he was going to fill this place up. Guess what? We can't laugh at God. We got to say, God, come here for high water. I believe you. It doesn't matter who comes. It doesn't matter who goes. I'm going to stay on the wall. Yeah. I'm going to stay faithful. I'm not going to let nobody move me out of my position with God. Yeah. And in due season, if I don't give up, if I don't quit, if I don't go in the towel, God is going to visit me with recompense. Amen. My daughter, my son, You've been faithful over a few days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come up. Hey. Oh, there he is. Come up. Yeah. I caught my spirit. Thank you. Thank you. A little higher. Yeah. 
I know my wife told me. That's good. <laughs> Come up. He <clears throat> should be looking. A little higher. And enter now into the rest of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's only one thing I want to hear. I'm closing the sermon on this note. <laughs> only one thing. I don't care about hearing nothing else. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Use your gifts, use your talents, put them to use for the glory of God. And when God bless you, don't have a problem in thanking him uh, privately and publicly. And when you're able to do that, guess what? You better look out. Somebody say you better look out. Better look out. Look out. Look out. You better look out. look out. When you can do that, T.D. Jakes wrote a book one time. Do you remember Minister Michelle? Can you stand? Yeah. See me blessed. <laughs> huh? <laughs> do like this. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> you better look out. <laughs> if you can't stand to see me blessed now, you better look out. Because God, somebody say, God, God is not through, not through. blessing me. Blessing. If you thought what you saw last year was great, you wait. Somebody say, the best, the best. is yet yeah. to come. Yeah. Keep serving God. Yeah. Keep working for the Lord. Yeah. The race is not given yeah. to the sweat, nor the strong. Yeah. But those who went through it to the end, God bless Thank you.
to the power. Gave your head. 